evening and welcome to Spooky South Coast. Tim Weisberg here, along with Stephanie Burke and the silent assassin, Matt Costa. Science advisor, Matt Moniz, feeling under the weather. I think he caught what I had last weekend, but last weekend I was kind of just right at the beginning stages of it. Or actually, no, Saturday night I was at the end of it, so it wasn't as bad. But, man, it's so easy to infect everybody else in it's the gross. radio world. It really is. I don't know if uh, if any of you guys are, well, I know you are, Matt, but if are you friends with Jason on Facebook? Jason that works here at the station? No. That's his voice that you hear on the imaging. Okay. Did you see that picture that he posted earlier, Matt?
Ben's house. Really? Yeah. Isn't well, that like backtracking. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Maybe we'll work it out. But uh, certainly, it'll be a very intimate event. And uh, if you haven't had the chance to go to the Smith Harris House, I've never been there before. Uh, Jeff has been. He gave a presentation there over the holidays. Uh, so it looks it, cool. Yeah, people are signing up for this just because they're like, I've never even heard of this place. Mm-hmm. I want to go. So I think that's uh, a big part of the appeal for people. And if you're looking for an event a little bit closer to home here on the South Coast area, we still have some tickets available for our Edaville Railroad event, Edaville USA. Uh, that's coming up the following week after the Screams of the Smith Harris House. That's on May 21st. And uh, we're really running out of tickets to that because the awesome. response has been overwhelming. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if it's because we haven't had an actual Legend Trips event since last September. Right. Or if it's because people just want to get into Edaville. I'm hearing a mixture of both from the people that are buying tickets. They're like, I remember going there when I was a kid. I've always wanted to go behind the scenes. And, you know, just the fact that there's paranormal activity is just a bonus. So I'm excited to go back not pregnant. Well. Which is fantastic. Because walking around, it was like 88 degrees that day. I was going to say, it wouldn't have, that night was not very comfortable, even if you weren't pregnant. No, I mean, it, it was, was kind so of a hot, sticky hot. night. Yes. And we're in these places, you know, craw- crawling around in attics and yep. basements. Walking and up and down stairs. <laughs> so, but it was, I mean, just to have that kind of access was, was pretty cool. That night, I think we had to have walked at least five miles with the amount of walking and around that we did. What's funny is that the, the area that we're covering is mm. not that big of an no. area. You know, it's not like we're going, you know, a mile from one building to another. Right. It's not, it's not even like equivalent to Wareham where you have to walk mm-hmm. to the... You know, it's, it's even closer than that. But there's just so much to explore. And we're going to explore it all. And they're doing more construction because they're putting they? in more rides and they're doing all kinds of stuff. Eventually that house is going down. Really? So it's only a matter... Because I think that's where the roller coaster is going. Oh. So it's only a matter of time before you're going to you know, not be able to investigate that house anymore. So I wonder where the spirits will go. The house that three different suicides took right. place in. And there's a lot of activity in that house. But, you know, with construction comes more activity. So you so, felt when you were in that house you could feel? Yes. Was, was it trying. the suicide victims that were yes. in there? It was a very, I don't even know how to describe it, just a sad, dark feeling. Um, it ended up being, like, so overwhelming that I had to take a seat and hang out with Jeff Belandra for a while because I was eight months pregnant and didn't really want to deal with the whole energy thing. And there were so many people that were so interested in what was going on. I just sat back for a while. Um, but I had a chance to be in the house by myself with just Jeff and it was very interesting. Cause it is a, you know, that house now is a very transient location. You know, they, mm-hmm. they use that as a place for people who work there to stay. Right. And so there's always people going in and out of that. And, you know, we're going to be talking about walk-ins in a little bit, but is that something that you pick up on too? A lot of the, just the constantly changing energies in the house or is it just those those people who were committed suicide there were very overwhelming no, you, in their you presence? You walk in that house because obviously it's very clear when you walk in that they use it for different things. Um, yeah, they have like all like their... like a break room. Yeah, they have all their stuff right. set up down there. And So it's not like it's a weird feeling, like, you know, when you walk in, like it's, it's clearly used daily. Um, but when you walk in, you almost feel like you're walking into a different time period. Um, or at least that's how I felt and not, not so much like decor or anything like that. I just feel like I'm walking into a place that's been shut off from the world for so long, but that's not the case because people are there every day and walking upstairs, you can just feel this overwhelming, just sadness and like solemn and darkness that comes with whatever energy's there. And, um, I didn't get a lot of time by myself, um, I think that, that night, Jeff Belanger was a little overprotective of my situation, too, because um, I was walking around in the dark. So he was following me everywhere. Um, and he was actually asking me questions because we got the chance to be there by ourselves. But when I first went in and I was trying to um, just check out the energy and check out the spirits, there were so many people that were behind me because they wanted to see first that I didn't get a chance to really communicate with um, whoever was there. And... Um, once they all left, I was just so tired. I couldn't walk back up the stairs. But you could feel it, like the energy from the first floor to the second floor. So I think the second floor is where the suicide happened. Um, is such a different world. It's completely opposite. And and how about in the museum? I mean, did you pick up on Ellis Atwood's spirit? Uh, you know, you know, he didn't. I guess he didn't die in the building, but he died as a result of an explosion that happened in the building right. while he was working on the furnace. Are we allowed to talk about that? You know, I haven't heard from the family. Okay. So 
um, I, I'm trying to remember now because my memory is so bad walking in there. Um, even the first floor of the museum was very interesting. I remember that. Um, it was. I didn't really like it, to be honest. I didn't like being on that first floor. I don't know what it was. Um, even like the second floor, and I'm sure a lot of it has to do with the um, the pieces that they have yeah, on display. Yeah, a lot of different competing yep. energies and... Yep, um, that completely, Nicole, I'm sure you agree with me, being in a room full of museum pieces that came from God knows where, um, mm -hmm. it just makes you feel yucky. Um, but being on the third floor and even surrounded by all the Christmas decorations and like how overwhelming it was, um, we that's when we broke out the Ouija board. Right. And that's when we had the direct communication, and um, that was actually really cool. So I didn't feel any one particular spirit over another. Um, it was just a mixture of so much energy, and I was trying to kind of push it all out at that time. But we did have direct connection with him. I don't think he necessarily stays there. I think he was just really excited that we were coming to visit. And the other report is that there's a lot of Native American spirits yes. around there. And I'm, I'm assuming that that's something that you encounter kind of everywhere around here. Um, yes and no. Um, I think it depends on the type of person that you are, too. Like, I come across Native American constantly. Like, where I go, like, certain places, it's the first thing that I pick up on because my guides are Native American. So, and I swear, I probably was in the past life because of the amount of connections that I make. Are, um, are they really Native American or are they just trying to get some of that casino money? No, I, I'd say real. Okay. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I forgot where I was when I picked up on it strongly. Um then I would have loved to have gone on the train ride, but I wasn't allowed to, so. Well, you, womp, were, womp, womp. you were also late. Yeah, because I know I wasn't allowed to go on the train ride. And then the train hadn't Steph even taken off. Late. Why, weren't, why no. weren't you allowed on the train? You told me I couldn't go on the train ride. Why? Because I was pregnant? pregnant. Yeah. You I mean, and Jeff were like, Jeff was freaking out about it. I don't know. Do trains make people go into labor? I don't, I don't know. know, but I think you both were afraid that I was going to be the liability. Well, you can't go this time either then. Why? I don't know. Tradition. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thanks. I'm just kidding. You can go. Yeah, I think we're definitely going to be having that. You know, the train ride is always iffy depending on the number of tickets that right. we sell, but I think we're going to be able good. to swing it. Yeah. Um, but all that, I remember being a child and going on the train ride, which is probably the only train ride they had at that time. And who knows where it went or if the track has changed. Um, but... I was looking out the window. It was, you know, the Christmas train ride that they used to do. And I'd be able to, like, see things that weren't there. My poor father that took me was, like, great, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like, we're not taking you here ever again. So I remember seeing spirits there when I was a child. Even in the um, in the area that had, um, like, the actual, like, trains on display, like the life-size motor cars and things like that, whatever mm -hmm. was in there at that time. Yeah, they used to have all kinds of, like, different... Yep. Stuff uh, all around there. They had like a whole Where, level of the museum with that. Wherever that was, I hated. The energy in there was horrible. I wanted to go home. I hated it. And I could see people in there too. See, it's weird because I'm, you know, I don't think that I'm psychic or yep. have any type of abilities. But I remember feeling that same feeling going into that museum area. Really? And I remember seeing faces always mm -hmm. when I was on the train ride. I would always see like... Like, it looked like people were skulking around out there, mm -hmm. but there was nobody out there, so. Right. My dad's told me a lot of stories about, like, the property and stuff like that from way before Edaville was there. A member so. of my family used to own a piece of the park. Really? And, you know, even he would say, yeah, you, know, you probably don't want to go there at night. Exactly. It's kind of a, a freaky place It's an amazing so. place, so. Nicole, have you ever been, Nicole? When I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And it's weird, right? We, we should definitely, we should drag weird. her back. I think, I think you should come <laughs> join us. So, um. May 21st, right? May 21st. There's, and there's tickets still available. You can get them from legendtrips.com. Uh, but I would hurry on that because it is probably going to sell out. I mean, we've, we've still got a couple of months here before the event. and I think it's probably going to be sold out before May. Yeah, it's it's moving pretty fast. And, and we're, we were able to add a few more tickets, and we may maybe even have a little wiggle room to add a few more. But it's just getting snatched up pretty fast. And, and so is the Screams of the Smith-Harris House. So you can get both of those by going to legendtrips.com. And signing up there. So I really think that, uh, you know, Edaville is one of those places that just has an energy around it. And, Nicole, you go to a lot of places that have these energies. I've heard some of the stories about some of the adventures you guys have had. Is <laughs> No, the ones that we can talk about on the air. <laughs> but do you feel like you are drawn to certain places and certain locations? I mean, do you feel like, you know, 
something's kind of pulling you towards certain. I know Stephanie has said before, like she feels like sometimes she's supposed to go to places. Do you get that same feeling? Absolutely. Sometimes you just feel like you need to be somewhere at a, at a given time. Um, so that you actually feel that pull there. I'm just going to ask you to pull that just a little, like right up to your face. Or you might have to move yourself closer to it. it. Yeah. You might have to, yeah. Just to the point where it feels really uncomfortable. No, you're like far this. away. No. Huh. <laughs> that, that's Is that perfect. Close but are you guys close <laughs> enough now? Do you? No, but I can move over, so we're good. Okay, you've you've got some wiggle room. It's like they have to hold hands under we the do. table during the show. You don't understand. You should understand by now. I do. It's like when the Wonder Twins would hit, yes, hit those rings we used together. Yes, to say that all the time. Yeah. Wonder Twins activate. activate. It's gonna it's gonna get really weird in here. Yes. So, you know, we, we've kind of talked uh, in, with you in the past about a variety of different topics, but one of the things that always fascinates me is that when people have abilities and they have these ways to tap into things that I can't tap into, I'm always interested in the process of how that works. Is it one of those things where it's it just becomes second nature for you now, or is it still overwhelming to you? I don't think it's overwhelming to me anymore. I think it was when I was a kid because I didn't know how to deal with it and I didn't really have anybody that was close to me that I could share that stuff with because it was taboo. Mm-hmm. So. But now you seem to be surrounded by, you know, through your work and through all the different, you know, things that you're involved with, you seem to be connecting with like-minded people. Right. Does that strengthen you as a person and does that strengthen your abilities too? I think both, because especially, I mean, obviously when Steph and I get together, weird stuff happens Mm -hmm. and we just amp each other up. So it's almost like, you know, connecting two energy pieces together that creates a a synergy of energy that it's more of a bolt. And I'll ask this question to both of you, though. Do you ever encounter somebody who, like, their gift and ability kind of competes with your own and, and, like, you can't? be symbiotic with each other that it's almost like no man you're on this weird frequency that i just you know it's like magnets you know sometimes magnets connect but sometimes magnets repel depending on what end you're working with Mm, i think that's more ego yeah that's what i was gonna say so it's more of your own personality and not your ability that can cause that problem right Mm -hmm. So who are some of those people that have that problem? No, I'm just kidding. We'll tell you in the well, next commercial. There. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure. I'm sure there's a I'm list. I'm sure you could think of, of at least names. one person right now. Uh, that are, right. Oh, yes. and, oh, now she's making hints. I didn't. I wasn't even going to go that far. I wasn't making hints. She's going to start I dropping. Just, hints. just re- give us the initials. rewind about twenty What's, minutes. Just, just the first initial. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no. <laughs> if I go there, somebody will think it's about them, and it's not. It, right now, everybody out there is listening. Thinking yeah, so it's if about you're thinking them. it's about you. So basically what we're saying <laughs> is Nicole is. and I are better than you. No. So uh, please, thinking. let's just stress that you're kidding. You don't, I am you don't totally really feel kidding, that way. but if you listen to the show all the time, you know I'm kidding. I think that's one of the things that a lot of people have a perception of, though, is you know, a lot of times when you're talking with somebody that has abilities, has psychic abilities, mediumship abilities, intuitions, whatever, you know people assume in dealing with them that they're going to feel like they're better. They're going to feel like they're more advanced Mm -hmm. and more evolved than us, you know, regular folks are. And I say regular with air quotes that I didn't do because, you know, (laughs) muggles, it's all in how much you perceive your abilities as being (laughs) really common and whether or not people have actually developed them. But I think a lot of people look at that as expecting you to have that type of approach. And some do. I mean, I've seen some of these mediums on TV or that do shows and say, you know, I do know more than you do. And I'm going to lecture to you in that way. And I'm going to tell you in that way. But I can say that with the two of you, you know, sometimes you're just like, well, I don't don't really, I don't understand it either. You know, just regular people too. And that's really uh, it. That's that's a stretch. Maybe a little bit of alien in there. Stop. (laughs) But it's, it certainly seems like, you know, you've never taken that approach of you're special for what you have. I've never thought I was special. No. <laughs> no, I tell people all the time, and Nicole's the exact same way. When you're born with this and you're born, like, 
into it, you have no idea that you're different, first of all. And I tell everybody all the time, it's like celebrities, kids that don't know that they're famous. We don't know that we're weird or we're different until somebody tells us that we are. Or we realize that not everybody else sees the colors or hears the voices or sees the people. And Mm -hmm. then you meet like-minded people that you totally sync with. Nicole and I were just out to dinner. We were talking about this. Like, There's very few people in your life on this journey and on this path that you meet that are exactly like you. Nicole and I are literally almost exactly the same in our abilities and the way that we receive messages and the way that we work together, we can link together. When you meet other people, some people are the teachers, some of the students, you can evolve into them um, or you stay at the level that you're at. It's all a matter of like where you're meant to be or how much, how far do you want to take it? So then, Nicole, I'll ask you then, is that fate or is that coincidence? I mean, that you would find people, but you two could find each other. I mean, is it a matter of, you feel like that's the path you were supposed to be on or you just got lucky? Well, I don't think that there are ever any coincidences. And I don't like to use the word fate because it seems like using the word fate, you're just, you know, putting yourself to whatever happens. And mm-hmm. I don't think that that's it either. So I think it's more of a, a combination of the choices that you make and, you know, how you decide to, to move forward. And, you know, when you're presented with something that you either accept it and you move on with it or you deny it and you digress. And I think that when I met Steph, that we just realized that, wow, there's something here and we just need to, we need to stay in touch. And it just, weird mm. stuff just evolved yep, into then something really special. <laughs> She's obsessed. I am. Well, <laughs> <laughs> moving on. <laughs> but I, I do think the idea of saying, you know, fate, it, it kind of gives this whole predetermined quality that takes away, you know, any kind of spontaneity that can happen and any type of reaction that can happen. Free will. And it's almost like it's it's less more of a pre-planned, you know, it's less like somebody making an outline of how they think your life should go and, and plugging you into this, those situations and more like an experiment. Like, hey, this person's like this, this person's like, let's see what happens if we put them together. You know, maybe all of our interactions with each other is like somebody's idea of, you know, playing blind dates with people. Like aliens? If you want to go there. I love to go there with her. I I know, (laughs) well, I know how she will Mm -hmm. interact with it, but you know, you're, you talk quite a bit about the alien stuff and you have in the past and I see some of the stuff that you talk about on social media and everything. And do you think that that's who is kind of lending that guiding hand? Sometimes, possibly. Is there uh, <laughs> <laughs> is there anything that Stephanie it's has like to be worried about tonight? Is, yes. I mean, should she be Every concerned night. about any immediate visitations? Always. Always. But, but I, so, to give you an overview or in a nutshell, when Nicole and I get too close, weirder things happen. What do you mean by too close? <laughs> Like physically too close or like when you start spending too much time together? I don't even know if it's just physical or if it's like contact. Like when I said Nicole and I have very similar abilities, very few people in this world have telepathic communication abilities. Nicole and I absolutely At the level that we do. Right. At the level that we do. I agree with that. So Nicole and I can be sitting in a room and completely talk back and forth to each other and not even speak out loud the entire time um we didn't realize we did it as bad as we did until we started giving it works meetings together because we worked together for a long time and we'd be giving meetings and people that are close to us would yell at us to stop doing it and we're like what are you talking about and we didn't realize it until they you know they kept saying it over and over again it was a different person here a different person there saying we're always trying to figure out what you two are looking at each other for and why you're like only bits and pieces of your conversations coming out out loud but it was because we're communicating back and forth the way that we are i can communicate with her no matter where she is and she can text me back exactly what we're talking about and vice versa and we do it a lot um so it's first thing in the morning right (laughs) Um, we interact in our dreams all the time. We go on adventures together in our dreams. We, there was a point in time where we were seeing each other regularly and talking every single day. She would call me every single day on her way home from work from the job that she had. Cause her commute was about an hour long or so. 
and she would talk to me, but then she had to start calling me every single morning when she knew that I was awake and she had a break at work because we would be able to tell each other what we were wearing in the dream the night before, what adventure we went on and where we were. And like I said, it just gets weirder from there. So the more we talk, the more that we're together, the weirder it gets. I'm just kind of mulling that over in my <laughs> mind. No, no, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not making fun of it, but I'm just thinking right. like, what is the, the, the rationale for, for two people to be so tied in together? I mean, what would be, is it, is it just that that's how it is? Or do you think like you were kind of always like that and just had to find each other to put it into full strength? I mean, did you have any inkling that there was this other person that you would be so connected to before you would ever actually met? I met Nicole. How old was I when I met you? When we meet, like 2008? Probably so about I was, then. I was probably about 19 when I met Nicole. They're great with the telepathy. They're terrible with dates. Yes. They can't remember that. Oh my God, you should have heard our conversation before. <laughs> we were trying to come up with <laughs> They're dates. They're like, uh, I think it was 2008. Um, so I was, we'll say I was like 19 years old when I met her. So obviously we're in two totally different times in our lives. We're mm-hmm. how many years apart? One, if you ask her. Ten. She's going to say one. No, ten. Maybe We're 12. 12, 12 years, years apart. apart. So, if I'm 19, you know, she's well into, she has four kids, she's married, she's everything else. I had just met my husband at the time. Like, two totally different aspects of our life at the time. But the way that we clicked, like, who, what 30-something-year-old do you know wants to hang out with a 19-year-old all the time? Well, some of the 30-something guys I know would love to oh, hang oh, out with a 19-year-old course. girl. I'm okay, I see. I see. <laughs> You know, but we clicked in a way like our souls connected. And obviously, I don't really act my age. I act like I, you know, I'm much older than I am. And I'm really boring. But we started to connect. So I'm wicked boring, I know. I used to be fun. Well, uh, how, did, how did that meeting happen? I mean, was it... We were working at the same place, unexpectedly. I just happened to come in and help the owner of the shop with something. So it was something related was related yep. to your abilities. yep. Mm-hmm. I was still, it was around the time I actually met you and I was like in the closet with my abilities. I didn't want anybody to really know what was happening, but I was like trying to like weasel my way into that world without anybody knowing what I was doing. Cause I hate attention and I'm really shy. And, um, we were just talking about it. I, I walked in and I'm like, I don't know what it is about her. I just need to talk to her. I, I feel like there's like this weird connection that I'm I'm not putting together yet. And then it just kept happening over and over again. We were in the same shop, in the same place. And it was really frequent at that time because you're not really there like much anymore. But I don't even know how it evolved from there. I'll tell you how it evolved from there. We were at another another fair type of activity and we were sitting down and talking because it was in the beginning of, of the, the time. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't hadn't picked up yet. And when we were just having this conversation and it actually came down to aliens, of all things. And um, that's Man. really how it evolved, through aliens. Oh, well, imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this, though. You have an ability when you first meet somebody that it doesn't take long for them to feel like they've known you forever. You know, and, and with Stephanie, you're, I mean, no offense, you're mm-hmm. a completely different personality than right. that. You know, it takes a long time for you to trust somebody and to, right. to know that you want to be friends with somebody. And I've seen you... You know, there are some people that you have said, I'm not comfortable around you for a long time. You know, mm-hmm. it's taken you a long time to open up around some people. So it just, you know, I know that that must have been an overwhelming connection for her then to have immediately kind of, I don't want to say latched onto you, but to immediately have made that connection with you because she is so shy and, and I don't want to say untrusting, but so guarded Yeah. in right. the way that she does no, things. That's right. So that's, you know, pretty impressive. And also, you know, there's some you don't just have to have abilities to have these type of connections happen. I mean these these things happen to some people in our lives. There's some people that you meet them and you say, "I can't wait to hang out with that person again." And then there's other people that you meet them and say, "Oh, I hope I never see them again." Mm-hmm. And <laughs> some sometimes we can't avoid it. Sometimes it just keeps Who's happening. That, Tim? Huh? Who's that, Tim? You want me to start naming <laughs> names? I can start naming names. Uh, but you no, know, I mean especially working in in the paranormal, you know, it's we, we want to have a connection with a lot of the people that are in the, into this stuff because not a lot of people are into it. So when you meet somebody like-minded, you hope that that connection is there, but it isn't always the case. And maybe, you know, it's, it's the same type of whatever is guiding you guys together. It's the same thing that guides all the rest of us together. Mm-hmm. You know, if Moniz was here, he would talk about 
some of the research that he's done into these UFO cases where, you know, people meet on ships Mm -hmm. and then don't realize it when they meet on earth that they've met each other on these ships in the past. Uh And I'm seeing one person nodding enthusiastically (laughs) while the other person is trying to brush off the whole part of the discussion. So I I wonder who that is. I will ask Nicole, do you think that was a possibility for you guys? Absolutely. I, I remember seeing, you know, like, the ships and faces. So you've been, you have recollection of being on, on an alien ship. several times. So Many just times. kind of describe it for us a little bit. Uh, well, I've had a few different types of experiences with that uh, since I was a little kid as Steph flies away over there. She's getting a Kleenex, it's okay. <laughs> and I'm my nose, okay? <laughs> I'll, I'll take your mic down. But, um, yeah, I remember seeing, you know, different views of that. Um, there was one ship in particular where I saw everybody that was on the ship, the, their face come on up and kind of what role that they played. And then um, there was another time or many times that I saw myself being worked on on the ship and I saw staff mm-hmm. and other people as well um, in this same area even though they were in different parts, I could feel them and I could see them and what was going on. So how many of those people that you remember seeing on the ship have you encountered here on Earth then? I don't know. I can't tell you because sometimes you make the connection like we did and then sometimes it's... It might take a a while. Um, I may have seen that people look familiar and I wonder if that was something there, but, you know... You can't always have that connection. And don't worry. You know, don't feel bad because I deny anything that Moniz tells me about it, too. Mm -hmm. You know, he tries to tell me that I was taken when I was younger, and I refuse to believe it. I haven't been taken. I can say that. Um, So you were there willingly? I don't know how to describe it. It's almost like Nicole comes in my dream and is like, hey, let's go. We're going on an adventure. And I follow her out of trust, and I end up on an alien ship. She's blaming it all on me. It didn't. It that? didn't happen until I was friends with her. But it's not a negative experience. No. She doesn't remember it until she was friends with me. I choose to to believe what I believe. Well, it's going to be negative for you no matter what because you don't you don't want it. It's absolutely terrifying. But I know there's nights where, okay, for example, there was a night where. I've never spoken about this publicly before. Either. I know that's why I'm, and I'm keeping really n- going about this because <laughs> you you haven't even told me this privately. <laughs> there was a night where Moniz, her, and I were all in the same place at the same time. We all talked the next day, and Moniz could tell us exactly what we were wearing. We told him exactly what he was wearing, and he was driving the ship. That's when I knew that's, I had to stop talking to both of them. <laughs> that's the alien's fault. <laughs> I've seen how Moniz drives. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't let him drive the ship. He doesn't drive any different in space. Those things probably cost a lot more money than than uh, than our Earth vehicles. but So... <laughs> I don't know. Are you, you 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 you've never seen any ships over the island, right? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Because, like I said, he's scary enough in a car. I don't want to have to be worried about like <laughs> all of a sudden the ship crashes in my backyard. Hey, bro. I have at least clarified it with Moniz that I have not been like abducted. I just like you, it's almost like an astral projection. Like I'm choosing yeah. to go. That's about it. But I just go and I hang out. But, like, Nicole and I have been on, like, these crazy weird missions and adventures. and It's like a boot camp. So yeah. <clears throat> then, you know, we talked about Crystal Children, Indigo Children, a couple mm-hmm. weeks ago with uh, Katrina Jane. Is that kind of, you know, what you're being surrounded with when you're making the visitation? People that have these abilities like yourselves? Or is that why you have these abilities? Are they the ones that have turned this on in you? I don't think they turned it on. Maybe um, at different stages turned it up. Yeah. Because I've always um, had contact since I was a kid. And um, I don't know, I just, like Steph was saying earlier, you don't realize that you're different. I saw colors around people constantly. I saw thought forms. I saw different shapes and different symbols and things like that. But I didn't know that that was any different. I thought my life was boring. Nothing, nothing special ever happens to me. Like there, there's nothing, you know, special about my life. And then probably when I was about six or seven, 
standing, you know, at the pew in church looking at the priest. I looked at my mom and I asked her, how come Father so-and-so is green today and he's usually purple? And my mom just kind of looked at me and said, you see colors around people? I was like, yeah, don't you see it? And, you know, that's how I realized that, you know, not everybody sees that. And I didn't know. So then maybe, you know, when, like you said, they're, they up there are amping this ability up, given you any reason why? Have, the, have you figured out why this might be or, or why you've been selected to have this gift amped up? I don't know. I just always looked at it as everybody has some form of ability. It's just a matter of if it's turned on, if it's suppressed, what, I don't know. And I've always been open to it, so maybe that's why. And I've honed in on it since I was a kid. I always wanted to know more, learn more. Some people that I know have had things happen to them uh, when they were kids where, it, you know, it freaked them out, so they just suppressed it, so they can't do it anymore. So, mm-hmm. Well, one thing that I'll say is, mm-hmm. you know, I've never met somebody that I feel has genuine abilities or is, you know, could have, gen- I mean, obviously not everybody, I can verify the claims that they make, but there's enough people that I, I feel like, whether they have a following or whether they've developed you know, this gift and other people or whatever, I'm, I'm, there's people that I'm willing to say, okay, I'm putting them in the very possible category. And most of the people that I meet in the definites or the very possibles, I haven't seen a lot of malevolent intent with their gift. Mm-hmm. You know, the worst thing that anybody can say about some of the psychics, mediums, people with abilities that I know, is the worst thing you can say is, well, they're making money off of that. And which isn't a bad thing. That's, they're utilizing other skills that they have and and this ability is part of that. You know, nobody can just be a psychic and go out and make money. You have to be a psychic that can also be a showman and and be an entertainer and be a lecturer and a public speaker and all that to be able to turn into, you know, a Maureen or a Sylvia Brown or one of those people. Because, you know, and people want that service. So there has to be an equal energy exchange for that. And whether it's a monetary Mm -hmm. exchange or some other form, that's one thing. And as long as you're not you know, taking people for granted or taking their money for granted. And, you know, it, it works both ways in that because there are people that they just want, they want more and more and more from you. That's, you know, Steph and I encounter that all mm-hmm. the time. They just want everything and they just... Yeah, don't give out your phone number. <laughs> right? You shouldn't give it out anyway. <laughs> they text you all day long. But that, I mean, but even that, if that's the most <laughs> critical that people can be about you... I mean, it seems like those who are endowed with these abilities and in tune with them, they're just compelled to do something good with it. You know, there's nobody out there that's walking around as the, you know, the the bad psychic. Nobody's walking out there and, like, turning that around and and using it against you. So, uh, to me, if they are grabbing you and amping this up, then they have good intentions. You know, it's not all negative. And and I know that, you know, Stephanie's going to find that hard to believe, but... I don't think it's negative. It's a fear of the unknown. And the way that I've understood it for however long, I'm hijacking your show right now and I apologize, but he brought this up. (laughs) Um, Anytime anybody's explained anything or like history shows or, or written down or people that know what they're talking about with this stuff, the gift of telepathy is not something that everybody has. The gift of telepathy is known to like communicate with Bigfoot and communicate with aliens, and communicate with this one or that one. You can be a fluffy psychic medium all you want. You can take classes, and you can turn on your intuition. That's great. It's awesome. You can be a medium. That's awesome. Not everybody has the gift of telepathy. Nicole and I also both have the gift of telekinesis that I used to use all the time when I was little, and that I suppressed because it scared the crap out of me. We could probably... I mean, we'll probably save this for another night when we can really go down this yeah. rabbit hole. But, and again, we'll get onto some other topics. Just with this, this started to fascinate mm-hmm. me, so we went down this path. But um, I'm starting to think more and more that it's possible that even as rare as you say that that might mm-hmm. be, I'm starting to wonder if a lot of the people who are involved in paranormal research yep. are not unknowingly telekinetic, mm-hmm. unknowingly telepathic, unknowingly able. I'm, I'm starting to. 
wonder how much of this stuff that we're seeing is actual spirit activity and how much of it is actually us. And I know that I've always thrown that out there as a theory. You can things with your energy all the time, and I tell people that. Like, if you pick up a pendulum or dowsing rods or try table tipping or, like, things like that, unless you know what you're doing, you can, you're moving those things with your own energy or your own mind. So it is possible, but, like, having the grip on it that we do from the time of birth, I guess, I didn't even, like, talk for the longest time. I just communicated with my mother telepathically. And I was totally fine with that. And I think that's where, like, my shyness comes from because I never had to say anything. My mom always knew what I was saying. We communicated back and forth. So um, having the, the, the grip on it that we do is, like, our being able to control it. Nicole and I also can, I mean, we can talk back and forth to each other. We plant ideas in other people's heads all the time. Like, or we can hear what they're like saying all the time. Well, I'm not. <laughs> they'll never hear it. Um, <laughs> or at least the people I do it to. So... Um, well, they won't know. I mean, that's no, the trick is to be no able to make idea. them think it's their own idea, right? Exactly. Even when, like, we're sitting at dinner and the lady asked her, like, how many tacos do you want? I'm like, you want three tacos? And I'm thinking it to myself. She goes, three, please. I'm like, I knew she was going to say that. But, like, we have fun with it back and forth. And we love sitting in a group full of people and just seeing, like, the things that we can do. So ours goes a little bit further than the norm, I guess. Yeah. Well... We only have about four minutes here before the end of the hour, and we'll get into some more d- discussion on the other side of the news. But Stephanie, being shy and, and, and having that issue, I I don't think shyness was probably ever a thing for you. It was. Really? Yeah, a long time ago, and I decided that... You overcame it well. Uh, thanks. It was a lot of hard work. <laughs> I'm no. so sick of it. I'm better now than I was. Yeah. I'm just it's saying, weird. because you, you just seem to be a very outgoing person, so... But that's that's by design. Took work. Yes, it took many years. Well, good job on that. I started when I was twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Try and get Stephanie a little bit more out of her shell. A little I'm better. Bit. And during the She's news. Getting there. During the I'm news, better. though, we have like seven minutes for you to get her completely right. on awesome. your level. All right, that sounds good. But I don't we, know if we'll get there. But. We are going to take a break uh, for the news. When we come back on the other side. I do want to talk about walk-ins because this is uh, something that I think a lot of people, that if you've never heard about it, it'll click in your mind and say, "Oh, well." This makes sense for a lot of the stuff that we're looking at. And uh, we'll talk about a variety of other topics as well. And uh, during the break, if you want to check out Nicole's website, we have it linked up on SpookySouthCoast.com, yes. Uh, But you can check it out for yourself. It's MagicLLC.com, right? That's correct. M-A-J-I-K-L-L-C.com. And so you can check it out. And, uh, again, we have it linked up, and we'll tweet it out and all that stuff as well. You can follow us on Twitter, at SpookySC, and talk about the show during the program using the hashtag spooky live and if you want to call into the show 508-996-0500-877-996-1420 we'll throw out the caveat we're talking about abilities but we're not putting them on display tonight so we're not having people call in for any readings or anything like that i have a deck of cards sitting here so it probably looks like that <laughs> yeah but you guys are just playing with yes them. so uh but uh if you want to have if you have any questions that you want to ask about about abilities and how they work certainly those are welcome And uh, if you have some of your own stories, when we start talking about walk-ins, if you have an experience with one you'd like to call in and share, you can do that as well. You can also text us during the show at 67664. So if you want to send us a text, just open up your text messaging app, uh, type in in the, you know, who it's going to line, type in 67664. And then in the message box, start your message with WBSM so that it filters into us here. And then I recommend that you actually save that number in your phone's contacts Save it as Spooky South Coast text line or WBSM text line so that you can text us anytime you want and, and save yourself some trouble. And it works great. We can get it right here in the uh, in the studio. I want to thank the person that's been listening on Spooky TV at SpookySouthCoast.com and letting us know about how things are going there. Matt, you think you've got all those issues under <laughs> ah, that's the that's the That's called the Spooky South Coast sign of assurance. Eh. So uh, we'll definitely uh, be broadcasting you know more spooky tv in the future but there will be some episodes coming up that we're going to have to pre-record just because people are going to be all over the place people are going to be everywhere and the red Sox are going to be on and so we'll have some shows that might only make it to podcast uh one thing that we might be able to do we might be able to have another backyard podcast coming up soon when the weather gets nicer you've been saying this is it true it's true and we're definitely gonna have to have nicole come for that one yes because these, these just get crazy. <laughs> these are drinking. These are partying. 
and then all of a sudden we just stop in the middle of it and say, all right, let's record a podcast where we talk seriously about the paranormal. All right, oh, let's talk details. Sounds like a good time. So we'll set that all up as yes. well. Uh, so, again, we're going to take a break for the news. When we come back on the other side, more with our guest, Nicola Hoos. Again, magicllc.com is the website. M-A-J-I-K-L-L-C.com. Back in a few. New Bedford's News Talk Station. New Bedford's News Talk Station. 1420 WBSM. New Bedford. Streaming worldwide on Radio Pop and on WBSM.com. Welcome back. Hour number two of Spooky South Coast. Tim Weisberg here, along with Stephanie Burke and the silent assassin, Matt Costa. And our guest tonight is Nicole LaHouche. She's here in the studio with us. I don't think the show just wouldn't be the same if you were over the phone. Nope. No. I have to come in here. It's always fun when you come in. And we always talk about a variety of different things. And, you know, like I said, I don't like to address critics mm. on the air. But there has been, uh, you know, we have had over the last couple of weeks, we have had some psychic-related shows. But I feel like it's important to kind of go down the road of exploring some of these abilities and, and what it is that people have. <laughs> I'm just going to go click that so I can see it happen live. All right. All right. So, but I, I don't see any problems with talking about these abilities because I feel like that is what is the most human part of the connection. You know, we can talk about ghosts and we can talk about aliens and we can talk about UFOs and, and Bigfoot and all these different things, but it's not so much whether or not they exist, but it's how we as people experience them. And it's how we as people connect with one another at these different levels. And talking with Nicole and Stephanie and hearing about how people have these abilities and they have these connections with each other that other people just don't seem to be able to reach or, or that will be able to reach, that to me is more fascinating than thinking that there's a dead person. You know, that's that the stuff that we can do with our own minds and the stuff that we can do with one another is that's the future of what it is. Because that's how we're going to tap into what all this other stuff is. You know, for how many years now have we been trying to prove that ghosts exist through the means of, you know, applying physics? 150? You know? So, in, in, and I'm just using that as, you know, since the, the dawn of the spiritual design. So, if we're looking at how long we've been studying it and trying to apply it that way, it hasn't been working. Then we have to get ourselves to another level before we're going to be able to figure it out. And I think, Nicole, you probably agree with that because I know that you're very, you know, you understand all the science that's involved with these things that we study, but you'll probably also agree that it's not really doing a very good job of explaining. Right, and I think that that's partly due to the composting of the science that's behind it. Yeah, P.S. So, to all the critics out there, she's been a scientist for, what, 18 years? <laughs> <laughs> I just, that sometimes, see, the the psychic stuff I can talk about all day, the, her science mind intimidates me a little bit. Does it? Yeah. I like it. That, uh, I know. She's my savior with all that stuff. But there are, you know, there are quantifiable things in what it is that we study. It's just sometimes we have to be willing to break out of the paradigm that we're stuck in now. And I think that is more... Pe right. See, I always say when I do like lectures and I bring up the idea of quantum physics, I, I always ask the question, is anybody in this room a quantum physicist? Because sooner or later, there's going to be somebody out there that will say yes. And then I can just turn the microphone over to them for a few minutes. But, uh, and I then think, no one will understand what they're saying. That's, exactly. But that's fine. Because <laughs> at least they know what they're saying when nobody understands them. If I get up there and say it, not only will they not understand it, but I'll also be wrong. So I'm, But nobody will know you're wrong. But I'm misinforming <laughs> them at the same true. time. So. 
Mm-hmm. But I, I, I do I've feel been like in that position where I've corrected somebody. Really? You know, on the down low afterwards, mm-hmm. nobody knew that they were wrong. Right. It's. Is is there? I mean, doesn't matter. Is there going to be a, a time when we will be able to say, you know, we can apply this and prove this? I mean, do you think that we'll inch closer to that to actually having a concrete, quantifiable, repeatable experience with the paranormal? Yes, and I think that that's already happening, but most people just don't realize it. We're just not able to apply the data correctly that we're receiving. Do you think it's easier to prove psychic phenomena than paranormal phenomena? It's a very good question. That is a very good question. Because, I mean, you could study brain waves or what part of your brain is actually activating and moving while you're making connections to either people's psychic energy or the other side. But you can't, you got to wait around for a ghost, right? Right. So all those people out there that aren't happy with the psychic show, at least it's, it could be provable, or at least more so. Is that even a word? I don't know. I'm too much energy. Yes. <laughs> too much energy drink. Take it away. Um, it's but, the sugar. Oh, my God, yes. So I think it's easier or at least closer down the road than possible paranormal. Well, I, I think part of the reasoning why, and this is just spitballing here a little bit, but with psychic phenomena and psychic abilities and, and human abilities – you're more aware of when they're happening and they Mm -hmm. can happen more frequently. Whereas the stuff that seems to be happening with, and I'm just, when I say paranormal, I'm going to stick to ghosts for the, for the main crux of this. But with ghost stuff, you know, it doesn't happen all the time and it's not always prominent enough for us to perceive it. See, I think it does happen all the time. Unpredictable because we, we don't control that side. Whereas with a psychic phenomena, you can control that. So I think that will lead to it being more, readily understandable for people because you can almost bring it up anytime on command. Mm -hmm. Whereas with a ghost, you know, no matter what anybody tells you, you can't really make it perform. You can't be like, dance monkey, and it'll do it. But (laughs) some people, some people more oftentimes than not, though, will have an experience. Mm -hmm. When, you know, and people always criticize me because when I go on Legend Trips events, invariably something always seems to happen around me. And at first I thought, okay, maybe I'm just perceiving too much you know maybe i'm just looking too much into this stuff and wanting something to happen so i'm willing to take you know this little minute possibility and blow it up into something big i do sometimes get you know overexcited about things and i do sometimes make some leaps in judgment and logic but when something happens and i have somebody like andrew lake who is a great analytical mind come over and be like uh no dude that really happened you know that makes me think okay well then why is there this frequency of this stuff happening you know, in my group or when, when I'm around these certain people, what is it? And I do think that like people's ability to perceive this and people's ability to interact with it has a great deal about with what they're putting out as much as just what's coming back at them. I think your own too, though, because I've watched you for a while now. When I first met you, you were kind of on the fence of how, how you felt about the whole psychic medium and paranormal thing altogether. You're, you were always aware of what's going on and questioning everything. And I think that that was a healthy way to do things. I still, the most profound thing in the world can happen to me and I still question it and still look for the scientific evidence of what just happened. Um, When I met you and when I finally decided like, okay, I'm going to kind of take down my guard, like you said, between the two of us. And even, I mean, Matt Costa was there that night when I was reading you guys because we were working on that project and just reading around and then you started to question like how I knew things. And then from then on out, like, I mean, I'll answer your questions before you ask them. And so you've let that guard down with me. You've almost become more aware of like a totally different world. And when you become more aware of things, things around you start becoming more aware of you. Um, And I think your experiences have completely gone from level one to level five since then. Well, I mean, and that was the day. I was in the Stop and Shop parking lot in Wareham, and uh, we were getting ready for a Legend Trips event. I was out doing some of the shopping and getting the sodas and the chips and all that stuff, and I got a text from Stephanie that said, what do you want? As I was getting ready to type the question to her in the first place. So, like, the fact that she already knew that I was questioning, and and, and I was like, well, I want, she's like, yeah, I'll do table tipping. Like, she already knew what Mm -hmm. it was that I was going to ask. 
So that's when I was like, okay, maybe there is a little something to this. <laughs> but, and we can, we can argue back and forth, Nicole, <laughs> about the scientific aspect of it because I don't, at this point, I don't need science anymore for mm-hmm. it. And I, I tell people all the time when they come to Legend Trips events, it's, if you want to go out and conduct a paranormal investigation, and this is what I'm going to be talking about at Salem Con, by the way, in a couple <laughs> of weeks, um, the title of my presentation is Ghost Hunting, You're Doing It Wrong. And I'm going to try to explain to people that you are doing it wrong because you're trying to put all these labels on it that don't fit. So stop minimizing the experience because it doesn't fit up to your expectations of what you're going to come out with with the experience. You know, you could walk into a haunted location and have this profound ghostly encounter, but because nothing came up on your device, you're going to discount it. Or because, you know, uh, it happened to you in this room and nobody else had it happen to them when they went into that room, you're going to discount it. So I think that we're doing it a disservice by ignoring it, especially because, as I was saying before, it might not actually be a ghost. It might be something that you're doing, and that's so much cooler to me. I'd much rather mm-hmm. be like you guys and be able to move stuff with my mind than to walk into a place and think a ghost is moving it. You know, mm-hmm. I'd much rather have that ability and that control and, and take myself to that next level than to worry about who's around me that has passed away. I mean, it's nice to know that there's people that right. have passed away that are around me, but I would rather be able to have that extra level of control over my environment. If we that can makes teach any you. Sense. Well, let's, let's not start now because you know, <laughs> I'm all hopped up on It Works Energy drinks. <laughs> it Works Energy. You can get it right now by going to workatburk.com. You can. Speaking of, before we go further in the discussion, because as we're talking about <laughs> how, how paranormal phenomena, and especially ghosts, only seem to happen for limited amounts of time and in random moments, <laughs> that will tie into the idea of walk-ins and what we're going to discuss. But before we get too deep into that, I just want to let everybody know about something that you guys have planned coming up together. We do. We have you, a, People can actually go and have the same amount of fun that we're having right now. Yes. We're working on the details of a workshop that's going to be on May 22nd, and it's going to be a full day. How many hours did we decide? I think 10 a.m. to 4.30, and yeah. it's going to be um, – we should hopefully have the details up online and tickets available to buy this weekend. So, oh, my God. <laughs> Everything is going crazy in here tonight. What is happening? Are you Okay. Listen, when I said it was cool that you could move stuff with your mind, I wasn't talking about the equipment, okay? Weird things are happening in the studio right now. <laughs> um, we're going to have all kinds of different things happening that day. We're going to have some uh, chakra yoga. We're going to have introduction to chakras. We're going to have psychic development, um, meditations. We're going to have Nicole talking about auras and crystals. What else are you talking about, I'll let you. Activating your third eye, how to do it and tap in. So it's going to be a, a full day of Nicole and I teaching back and forth. And this is the day after the Edaville event. It is, actually. So you so guys should be right that. out of bushy-tailed <laughs> yes. the next morning. You know, I didn't even think about that, but yep, I'll be, I'll be ready to go. So, um, But it's going to be a full day of just the secrets of Nicole and I's minds. And well, we're sharing with you and we're teaching crazy. you. So. By the time a lot of people <laughs> listening to this podcast, you'll probably have the details up yes. there and tell them where to yep. go to find so out all the info. So you guys can go to um, workitbark.com and you can click on events and you'll see a Facebook event that will have the tickets, um, the ticket link available. So hopefully we'll have it up by the weekend and, well, the end of the weekend, I should say, which is tomorrow. Snacks be <laughs> provided? Snacks will be provided. We're going to have a of light course. a light breakfast. We're going to have a catered lunch. Um, and it, Nicole will be doing aura photography during the breaks <clears throat> for an additional price. Um, she'll be having some of her her stuff for sale, her crystal skulls and the awesome stuff that she comes along with. Now, you do the aura <laughs> photography quite a bit for people. I do. Uh, but one of the, <laughs> the places that I've seen you do it is at, is at the Comic-Con, you know, at, at, in a Terracon. Like, when you have brought that up, what has been the reaction from people who aren't, who are happening, up, happening upon that and not actually going out looking for it? Uh, it's pretty interesting because you get a wide array of reactions to it. Uh, you know, what is it is the most common question. You know, what is that? I don't, I don't understand that. Um, and usually when people just say, well, what the heck, I'll try it out. Uh, it's not what they expect, which is really good. Did any of the uh, celebrities come by and have a time? No, actually. Uh, I don't think that they get enough time away from their booths to... (laughs) We're going to work that out this year. <laughs> We're going to make sure that... Uh, are you going to be going back this year, do you know? 
it all depends. Well, you'll be know. there. I mean, you're gonna I go no matter be what. There, yes. You can't not go. It's just whether or not you're gonna I think be it doing. It was more the, fun the, when the... I just got to parade around. Oh my god. <laughs> no, listen. I, I haven't been to one yet. I don't. I don't want to tell stories out of school here. Mm-hmm. But I watched like four kids have their first pubescent experience walking <laughs> by her last year. Mm. She turned boys into men oh just god. standing there in her costume. <laughs> that is awesome. It was. It was. Uh, it was well, very, very well done. Do we have a spooky Thanks. South Coast booth? Uh, no, I'm working on making sure that we have a table instead of me just wandering around this year. I like that better. So hopefully, Maybe I'll come uh, hang out with you. Every, yeah, then everybody can kind of come in and hang out, and it's it gets crazy over there. It does. It does. It gets crazy, but it is it is a lot more fun when you can just get up and kind of wander around. I've had like two different people ask me if I can go next year and if I can sit at their tables. I'm like, mm, sorry, to Meisberg's my number one. We should one go guy. as aliens. <laughs> you just silenced her. You stunned her into silence. Can I hide under the table now? <laughs> well, we will have the phone lines open throughout the rest of the show at 508 996 0500 877 996 1420. And uh, <laughs> somebody texted in. I think we found the issue. The studio ghost has not been placated. So we'll, we'll have to offer up some offerings mm. of more, more It Works energy drinks. Yes. Uh, but uh, we do. Are- Falling and crashing around Evidence. everywhere. We get around, but the place the place is haunted. It is haunted. So <clears throat> that's why when you were like, "Oh, I'm I'm gonna go down the hall before the show," I wanted to like warn you to take somebody else with you. Yeah. And then I was like, "No, she'll be all right." <laughs> you have to be careful. Like you go down into the water bubbler, you know, something touches your back, and you know, you walk down the other hallway, and something's creeping up behind you, yeah. and that's oh, just because yeah. that's just because Brian's here. <laughs> oh my but, god. We just had a text come in that says, with the amount of energy between you two, Tim is lucky the place is still in one piece. So far. But we have uh, we have about 35 minutes to go. And again, you can call in at 508-996-0500-877-996-1420. You can also text us 67664. And if you want to text in, just start your text with the letters WBSM. And then we'll be able to see the messages here. You can also talk about it on Twitter using the hashtag SpookyLive. That's another easy way to reach out to us. And, and of course, you can follow Nicole on Twitter at Magic LLC, M A J I K L L C. And we have it uh, tied up with our uh, account as well. And I want to say hi to all the new listeners, too, by the way. We have a couple of people, somebody joining us for the first time live tonight. Uh, Robert Welch, thank you for joining us. Uh, we also had um, somebody that just discovered the show. Uh, so we want to say hi to Robin as well. Uh, she's a new listener and, and local, so she's happy that she found something in her own backyard. Which is awesome. I just stole your shout-out segment, though. You did. It's all right. I'll yeah. give it up to you this time. All right. That's, we'll keep that your territory. <laughs> That's okay. But uh, we've been talking, you know, been hinting a little bit uh, throughout the night about the idea of walk-ins. And uh, for those who are unfamiliar with the idea, what, 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 how would you describe that, a walk-in? There's a little bit of controversy as to how to describe it exactly because sometimes uh, people think of a walk-in as a completely different soul coming in and exchanging with yours. Others uh, believe that it's a higher aspect of yourself, um, which it could very well be either one of those cases. And um, I think more so now than previously that it's more of an exchange with a higher aspect of you from another maybe dimension or something like that. See, most of the time that I've heard stories of walk-ins, they've been solid, you know, three-dimensional beings with mass. You know, somebody that would just would appear, whatever would happen, and then they would just as soon disappear. Uh, has, has that been a lot of what you've found in research too, or is it is it a matter of just an energy coming in? Uh, it's more like... When you can't hold yourself, you, you can't contain yourself enough to move on and do the work that you were placed on this earth to do, so to say. Um, your soul leaves your body and another one takes the place. So, you know, some people might say that that's kind of like a body snatcher. Right, like, a, like a form of like spirit possession or... But, it, but I don't think that it's exactly that because it's not a possession where the, your soul is still there and then something else is possessing your body. It's an exchange where yours goes, this other one comes on in. But in, in terms of your internal, you know, mental 
dialogue with yourself, that doesn't change? I mean, you're still consciously aware of who you are. You, To a certain degree, you are. Uh, you're still that person. Uh, a lot of times it's reported that there is uh, either total or partial memory loss, which was with my case, there was a partial memory loss there. And um, a lot of things end up changing in your life rapidly. So, and, and I'll let, you know, I, I totally understand if on the personal side of things, if you don't want to get too deep into it, I won't push. But with yourself, so you have this missing segment of your life. Is that, is that what happened? It's a little bit weird. Um, it's, it's hard to just jump into that portion of it, and I don't sure. mind talking no, about it. Uh, wh- however personally. you think we need to get to... It's, it's kind of a weird, long story, um, but typically this type of phenomena usually happens when you're basically ready to cut on out. So um, I was at a time in my life where uh, I just felt that it didn't matter where I turned. I didn't know what to do with myself, and I just, arms up in the air, don't know what to do, just wanted out. The only thing that was holding that I was holding on to was I I had um, I had my kids, and I don't know. It was just a very weird place to be, and um, typically this happens when you're at that point, and then some kind of traumatic thing happens. With me, I was driving home uh, from work, and it was. You know, I was almost at a place of employment for a year at that time. And just driving home, I was late. It was a horrible, horrible day. Uh, I had to drive down the Mass Pike every day. So, you know, coming home at 4 o'clock instead of 3 o'clock to me was a nightmare because then it was going to take me at least an hour and a half to get home. So there was a couple cars that were off to the side. One of them was smoking. Um... It was right around the Framingham area where the Jersey barriers are are really close to the high speed lane. It's right there. And I just remember every little detail of everything that was happening because time just slowed down to almost a standstill. Um, Tool Stink Fist was on the radio. Uh, I remember, like, what the heck? I looked over at at the other side of the traffic and this woman with this dark curly hair and you know her car her car door was smashed in I just remembered thinking how the heck did her car get smashed and you know she was bouncing like in slow motion side to slide like that and I'm like where is this other car as I looked up and the other car was about to land basically in my lap And I saw the man that was in the car, and he just looked completely terrified, and so was I. And I just basically, everything slowed down to the point where I saw every member of my family. I said goodbye to them, and I was like, that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to die. Okay, um, I'm ready. And I basically screamed like a little girl, and because this guy was going to land in my lap, I I thought that my car was going to get smashed down and that his car was going to tumble over mine and the hood was going to get smushed in and my neck was going to break at that point. So I scrunched down as much as possible and leaned my head to the side, like trying to hope that, you know, maybe there's a chance that I could live through this thing. And then I blacked out. And when I blacked out, I felt... Um, The only way I've been able to describe it is when you play pinball and you're pulling that pin back and that ball and you shoot it out and it was like that. It was, I shot forward so fast and I was still passed out that when I came to, I was driving down the Mass Pike. There were no cars on the highway during rush hour. That doesn't happen Mm -hmm. on both sides. And... I remembered where I was when I woke up and I was in the high speed lane and I was like, oh my God, I I almost just died. Oh my God, I almost just died. And I I was looking around where I was and I thought, wait a minute, am I dead? I called up my mother and I said, mom, am I dead? 
And she's like, oh my God, Nikki, I was just praying for you. I, I just had this horrible feeling. I was praying for you. I was like, okay, so I'm not dead. Are you sure I'm not dead? <laughs> and I just had this really hard time because I didn't know what happened. I knew what I felt. I knew what I saw. And it was impossible for me to be where I was. Mm -hmm. And I, I measured it out on another day driving home from work, and I was two and a half miles from where I was. And a year after um, that accident, I found out from a friend of mine who people were talking with uh, during just a, a lunch thing. They were talking about like weird accidents and stuff like that. And um, the guy died, a woman died, that he hit her car. And, you know, there was, it was in Framingham, it was that, it was that accident. And I was just basically projected forward. There was no, there was no way that I could have because there was a car that was right in front of me and we were literally going 30 miles an hour on the Mass Pike. After that, um, you know, my husband thought that I was exaggerating and things like that where, you know, <coughs> there's no way that that could have happened and, you know blah, blah, blah. And I didn't expect anybody to believe me either. So, you know, this is really the first time that I'm telling this like front to end, you well, start to finish. We and, appreciate that. Um, I always, uh, I was talking to staff earlier. I said, you know, this is kind of really weird for me because I have never told it start to finish. And I've always, you know, talked about pieces of it in certain contexts pieces that were easily digestible. So uh, thanks for your patience in all of this. Well, I, I would just, I mean, <clears throat> what, what, what was the actual reality then? What, what actually occurred? You know, how much of that was you being projected into that accident? How much of what happened afterwards when you came to was reality? Or was it just kind of a, a mixture of how you were handling all of that together? It was really... Um, Overwhelming and, you know, the the joy of, of life and appreciation for life was there, obviously. It was two days before my son's birthday as well. So, like, all this stuff just flooded through my head. And um, it was an instantaneous kind of change, but it took a while for it to come out. Um, basically, I just the accident scene was the way of the walk-in coming in. Mm -hmm. When I blacked out, that was part of me left, a new part of me came in. And that part took over. And, uh, I mean, I drastically changed my, my haircut. I, you know, changed the way that I dressed. I, you know, everything about me started changing, and I didn't even know what was happening. Um, I had this overwhelming urge to just buy all these crystals. I had to have crystals all around me, and I didn't even know anything, so I thought. And I just knew. I, my son came up to me. He said, Mom, what's this one? I just bought, like, a, a, like a, a bunch of miscellaneous mixed crystals. And my son said, oh, you know, what, what is, what's this one, Mom? I was really tired that night, and I, I said, oh... I don't know, you know, I don't know, I'm really tired, and he just, he, as soon as he put it in my hand, oh, that's chrysoprase, it does this, this, and this, oh, that would be a really good one for you um, to kind of calm your energy down and, you know, work with you and in, in what you need, and all this stuff flew out of my mouth without me even thinking about it, that I had to look it up, I didn't even know how to spell chrysoprase, never mind, you know, what it actually did as a stone, and... Every time that something like that happened, I was right on, right on, right on. I started having all these visions of things that I had no idea about, these symbols, uh, gods and goddesses just appearing, then their whole look and everything that was around them, the names, people I had never heard of before. If, and then I looked it up, and it was all, it was all true. So it was like just all of a sudden this knowledge was within you, but you still felt like you, but just something wasn't right? I felt like me in a dream. That's what it felt like. Um, my kids were, and, 
and my family would mention things and say, oh, you rem remember that, reminiscing about something. And I couldn't, I couldn't pull it out of anywhere. I'm like, no. When did that happen? They're like, come on, this was like the best thing. I, don't, I didn't remember anything. And it started happening so often that I just would say yes and go along with it and laugh. And inside, be like, holy S, I, I have no idea what they're talking about. What, what are they talking about? So there was that part that I felt very much alone because um, I didn't know who to talk to about it. I had no, I, at that point still, I had no idea what was happening. Um, people would come up to me and they've ha they would have ailments and I would just touch them um, or I would see it and I would touch them in the spot or whatever, wherever, say it was a headache. Um, I remember going up to somebody and just saying, oh, just hang on one second and I put my hand on them and they said, oh my God, my headache that's been pounding for three days is gone. Exactly in the spot that you touched me. And, um, you know, people, just all different types of things like that would happen. It wasn't until, I'm going to say, I think it was a, a year later that um, I was actually attending a workshop. And the woman said, oh, you know, I don't know what happened, but I have this video. It kind of jumped into my bag if you guys want to watch this. And we were watching the video, and it was all about this walk-in experience that the guy was talking about and the similarities that were that happened between that guy's nephew and myself were just so overlapping that I freaked out. I actually freaked out because I realized what had happened that day and everything that had happened up until and still happening to that point. And I didn't know what to make of it because this whole concept of, you know, this other soul or this other energy coming in and who am I now and what is actually happening. And then over time I, I, I came to accept it a little bit more because I really felt that it was more of a higher aspect of myself. Um, coming on in and just kind of taking over saying okay you know you've done you've done what you needed to do to this point and I'm here to alleviate you from that and you know we can still do this so um, am I missing something I'm sure mm -hmm. I am there are tons of stories that go along with so, this I know, but so you're, doing the, good. you're still you I'm still me and you're just a different version of you kind of came into being right is that or was this a you see uh, think of it uh, as if you were to be able to project yourself until you know uh, the year 3000 right um what would you be like then you would have you know if you think about it as technology right now we have more advanced technology it would be a more advanced self that was able to kind of step in and say okay well a year or two to do what you need to do here, you need an upgrade. So that's what I'm here for. I'm here to step in as the upgrade. That's how I look at it. But still keeping it at a level. Because, you know, just as an example, uh, my wife and I were watching that 11 63 show, the Stephen King show, where the guy show. travels back in time and, and tries to uh, stop the, the assassination of JFK. And we were talking about how it's easy to travel back in time because you already know what happened and so you can adjust and adapt based on that but that if he was to bring the people from the past to the future their heads would probably explode by how much had changed so is your higher self that's coming back are you being you know tempered down a little bit with that advanced knowledge so that you don't have this you know your head doesn't explode is it being kind of fed to you in a way that you can digest it and handle it is yeah. the self that you are now, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think, I think yes, it is. It's uh, easier to, to assimilate because it, it's been, you know, obviously you don't short circuit. So you come on in and, and you have, there is an adjustment period. There definitely was an adjustment period because I was so overwhelmed and freaked out with all these things that were happening all at once. I had to hurry up and come to terms with what was happening before I could actually 
act on any of those things. Um, and it was more of a, I had to prove it to myself that, you know, this is actually real and it's happening. And the information that I was getting was clear and, and correct because things would happen. I would see everything that was happening and it would happen. You know, sometimes I would see two years into what was going on. Sometimes I would see much more than that. But over the course of time, I've, I've been seeing everything coming to fruition that I've seen, you know, 10 years ago. And it's, it's a matter of once you have accepted that, does it make it easier and, and, and more adjustable to your everyday life? Or does it still kind of get to those points where it's overwhelming at some point? No, I've, I've uh, come to terms with it a long time ago. And I think, um, you know, maybe, maybe it took about five years to really assimilate fully to the point where I, I forget. I don't, I don't mean this <laughs> to be a slight. It's You're okay. wired differently than a lot of people. I mean, so that is, you might already have a, a little bit more of a base to be able to handle something like that. What happens to somebody who isn't at the same level that you're at? You it know, what probably happens? doesn't happen at so, all. So they don't even have this experience. I don't know. Some people, they'll go into a coma. You know, I've heard of that. People going into a coma and they don't come out for a while. And then they have total memory loss. Maybe, that, maybe it's those people that kind of get you know, their system wiped out and they have to start all over again. Um, I don't really know because I don't, I don't know everything. Uh, and because you are, you are attuned <laughs> for it, so it's, your experience is different than what theirs would be. Uh, so this, but this doesn't always have to be a case of a higher version of yourself coming back. This could be other entities as well. Um, I would say that when you say other entities, I would specify it as... Um, a lot of people like to look at it in terms of a, like a soul contract. Like you, you'll live up to this point, and then I'll come in and take over. Um, instead of, I don't like to say entities because then that sounds like a possession. Yeah, mm -hmm. like like an yeah. energy or or a, a, an an, a an soul intelligence. Exchange. Like we were talking yeah. about stuff. It's easier to say a soul exchange. So if that's the case, and if it's a soul exchange. You know, we talk all the time about our physical bodies dying and our souls living on. So can it work the other way then, that sometimes our soul will die before our physical body does so? Well, the soul doesn't die. It would just move on and go off to a little energy sphere. So kind of like the soul has kind of advanced beyond the need for this. Mm -hmm. Right. So then it's the old version of yourself no longer needs to be here, so it goes off and does what it would have done if it stayed in your body for 95 years. It's like getting to the next level in a video game. Like right. you, you get the new life. <laughs> Power up. Right. How did the mushroom taste? That's what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Which one tastes better, the one that makes you bigger or the Spongy. one that gives you the extra life? But so, but for other people, though, these, these experiences, they might be uh, a matter of, is it ever just something kind of passing through, or does it always become a takeover situation like can it be a temporary thing that helps you get through a certain part of your life and then moves on or is it always you know kind of i suppose it could i don't know for sure could i would think that i tend to have the opinion that if it's going to happen it's not a temporary thing okay because i don't see how you can be touched in that way and not have it completely change your life for the rest of your life and that you know when your soul leaves it doesn't want to come back the whole purpose is for it to leave if it wants to go there's there's no way that it goes out there and then want and feels the energy that's out there and then wants to come back to that you know mm -hmm. at least not permanently i mean it might come back to visit right no. No, that's not I what we're experiencing when we experience so. ghosts and I don't think so. Well, that's different. That's that's the the spirit visiting and, you know, um con trying to connect with other energies. What we're talking about is the soul going back to the source. And when you go back to the source, it's kind of like, you know, that's why we cross people over. Mm -hmm. So we cross spirits over because they need to get back to that source. And if they're going to come visit 
family members and things like that, that's different. That's just pop it in to say hello and you know it takes a lot of energy to come back in that fashion but you're not also coming back into this dense body when you had that when it clicked in your mind and, and you realized that this is what you were going through and, and what it, did you feel like you had any kind of an obligation to live your life differently did you feel like this was kind of a wake-up call for you for one reason or another absolutely like I said, everything changed. But I had like this mission. But it changed as a conscious change, not not a matter of, you know, all of a sudden you were doing things differently than you had before. I mean, you were consciously saying, I'm trying to be a better version of me. Uh, or at least a different version of me. It just happened, I would say. There, it was just a complete, it was like a, a switch was flipped and that was it. It wasn't a decision that I said, okay, I'm going to do this. And then I went and did it. It was okay, well, this is what's happening, so get with it. That's, that's the only way I can describe so it, it. So it felt like a natural fit. It was, uh, this is what's happening or else. Okay. <laughs> I, had, I'm, I'm, I had no choice because it, if that's the soul that came in, that, you know, this is what was supposed to be happening and I was supposed to do X, Y, and Z. There was, it was like a one-way street that it's just going forward, there isn't any going back. Because uh, the reason why I ask is because for you, that realization seems like it was, you know, positive, like it was pushing you forward. But for some people, that could be extremely traumatic and, and could actually have kind of an adverse effect. Or is it just that when it takes over, you know, there can't be that adverse effect because it's putting you on that trajectory? Can people kind of relapse and, I, and it can make it worse? Uh, well, you can always run away from what you feel. So I would say, yes, people could do that. You know, I could have, you know, just drowned myself in whatever, I guess, because it is overwhelming. And if you have that tendency to, to run and hide. But I think that in these cases that when it happens, you're, you become strong enough and, or it wouldn't have happened in the first place. So I think most of the time it's, it's a positive thing. But I mean, I went through my own self-doubts and what I had to go through to kind of teach myself and, and learn about who I was and what I was supposed to be doing. Um, I had a lot of questions and turmoil within myself. It may not have looked that way mm -hmm. because I presented myself a certain way, but at the same time, there was an inner struggle going on, wondering, you know, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing and, you know, what, what was this path and, you know, what, what's going to come of it. And then especially seeing these things that I was seeing with the visions that I had no idea how some of this stuff was going to happen. And guess what? It's been happening. But I mean, at this point in your life, you already have confidence in your abilities. Uh, so you already know that you are different and you already know that you are tuned into a different wavelength. So that probably helps you to uh, know where you're at. Because this question that came up uh, from a texter at 67664, it says, Watkins, how do you tell the difference between this, the higher self idea, and other diagnosed mental conditions? So because you're tuned into what it is that you know is your life and your life path, it's easier for you to accept this. But for somebody else, they might be thinking to themselves, am I nuts? Am I crazy? Oh, I definitely thought that. <laughs> I was like, am I nuts? Because uh, all these things that were happening, but it was time and time again when I would see these things and they would come to life. It, it was actually true material, something I could prove. And that's, you know, being a scientist, I needed proof. Mm -hmm. So I always had to look things up. If something came to me or if I woke up from um, some kind of dream or... If uh, I had a vision of something, I had to look up as much as I could after the fact to find out what, how much of it, what percentage of it was real and was I making it up. I always thought I was making it up. So I would humor myself and try to look, look it up. And it was always spot on. So after so many times of that, you start realizing that, okay, well... Maybe I don't have a mental problem, <laughs> but maybe the, there's something to this. 
And then I just started delving into that. Um, so that's a really great question and, and a really great comment with that too, because I mean. For other people that might be more of a struggle, but they might also get the same type of verification happening to them where they can say, okay, you know, it's not just a crazy vision that I'm having. It's a premonition. Right. I mean, I, I mean, I assume, I assume it all just seems crazy until it actually comes true. This is true. Because yes. it's hap the way that it's happening to you and the intensity that I assume that it happens with. Right. And then there's another question. We only have a few moments left, but if anybody wants to call in, uh, 508-996-0500-877-996-1420. I don't know if this question will kind of fit into your experience, but uh, the question is, do you have any theories on the idea of walk-ins in the form of puckwudgies? So are these entities coming in as other... Uh, so shouldn't use the word entities. Are these different souls coming in in other forms uh, as opposed to just coming in and taking over us? Can they appear in different forms for us? I'm going to go ahead and say I have no idea on that. But as far as my personal opinion, I think that it probably happens to humans more or only because of the fact that you know, we probably need so much more help than some of these other beings because, you know, like Pukwudgies, they already know what's going on. They're already tapped into that spiritual realm um, where we've kind of, as humans, as a collective, we've kind of uh, disconnected ourselves in so many ways that we're the ones that need the help. So I don't hopefully know if that's that, good enough. Hopefully that answers the question. Uh, and... See, this is this is why shows with Nicole are always fascinating because we start off goofing off, having a lot of fun, <laughs> and then by the end of it, we're like blowing everybody's minds with yes. with some of this information. And and uh, but the fact that that happened to you and that you shared it, and thank you again for sharing that with us and with our audience. But there's probably people out there that are listening that are having the same thing happen to them. And in just a few moments that we have any kind of recommendation you can make for them as to the next step that they can make into figuring it all out. Well, what I would suggest is just, you know, try to stay calm, go with your gut instincts because those are the things, that's the thing that's really going to drive you. Go with where you're being guided and just be who you are and don't let anything hold you back because that's really what you need to be doing and just kind of write everything down that comes to you. Be okay with it. It's going to take a little bit of work and a little bit of time definitely, but, um, you can get through it. And, um, if me sharing my story has helped you in any way, then, you know, reach out to somebody, whether it's me, staff, Tim, whoever, or just somebody that's close to you, just reach out to somebody and, and just go with it because over time you're going to, you're going to be glad, um, of the things that, that come to you from it. The, the problems that you were having immediately proceeding aside, do you feel like you're a better person now, having gone through that, than you were before? Absolutely. I look at things in a completely different way. Mm -hmm. Well, Especially I think... Especially life and death. Mm -hmm. I think that certainly is the, the best lesson that anybody can take from this. And uh, and again, if you want to actually come out and, and meet Nicole, and, and people can meet you doing all kinds of things all the time. Yes. And uh, so, I mean, what's the, the best way for people to get a hold of you if they want to reach out to you? Uh, they could email me at magic at magicllc.com. That's M-A-J-I-K. And um, I don't know. I'm going to be doing a doing that day with staff. Uh, that's, that might be one of the next places. Well, actually, I'm going to be doing Paranormal for Pause or a photography over there at the end of April, mm -hmm. and then Steph's Day. Um, but I'm at different events all over the place. Just watch my Facebook website, Magic LLC, and um, I post where I'm going to be next. And, of course, uh, mm -hmm. definitely, again, May 22nd, yes. workatburk.com will have the tickets. Yes, and, and if... I mean, we're expecting that to sell out. It's um, very limited space. So if you want to be on any type of pre-list, then please email Nicole or I, um, marketbark at yahoo.com, marketbark on all social media, marketbark.com, um, and we'll send you out the link first. So that way... But I, but I can just crash it, right? I can just show you up. Can crash I can just it. show up when lunch is served. You That's can. all I care you about. You can. We kind of <laughs> like you. So. That's all I care about. 
getting getting a meal out of it. Uh, no, but definitely stay tuned for that uh, on workatperk.com for your chance to get out and meet the ladies. And uh, we'll be back next week for another show. I might be a little bit late because I'll be doing some ring announcing at the House of Brick show mm-hmm. at Dublin's. And I'm pretty excited about that. It'll be my second time, so I'll be a little bit more comfortable. Good. I can actually work on being a ring announcer instead of like... Just being in there like, hopefully nobody throws anything at me or oh booze me. <laughs> and the one thing I have to learn between now and next Saturday, though, is where I'm supposed to stand when people mm-hmm. come down because Good all idea. the wrestlers looked at me funny. Uh, but I'll be here immediately after that. We'll have a, a show for you, and uh, then we'll have all kinds of stuff planned. So uh, when you don't have the chance to catch the show live, you can always catch the podcasts online. Just go to SpookySouthCoast.com. Go to iTunes, go to wherever podcasts are found. Somebody was mentioning to me about looking for older episodes. All you have to do is go to our website, find the archive feed, and you'll get everything prior to the last 100 episodes, which is what iTunes and most other podcast sites are putting up there. And, of course, Matt Costa doing a great job getting the YouTube videos loaded up as well. So thanks, Matt, for doing that because, you know, I was not keeping up with that. And I know at least one guy was getting very upset. So there you go, Jim. Matt Costa has taken it over. (laughs) You have him to thank for that. Uh, So that about does it for this week's show. Again, as I mentioned, we'll be back next week. You can find out all the information about the show at SpookySouthCoast.com, and you can always email us, SpookyCrew at SpookySouthCoast.com, or follow us on Twitter at SpookySC. So for next week, for Matt, for Matt, for Stephanie, for Chris, for Nicole, I'm Tim, and we want you all to stay spooky. New Bedford's News Talk Station. New Bedford's News Talk Station. 1420 WBSM. New Bedford, streaming worldwide on Radio Pub and on WBSM.com.